Um, okay, thank you. Uh, so I'm Wilkes Coppage. I work as a lead developer at Bbox, uh, which is a company uh, serving developing markets, serving um, the roughly one billion people who don't have access to electrical grid. Uh, we want to provide them with clean, affordable, and uh, sustainable uh, energy sources and other utilities. And as interesting as that sounds, this is actually a, a sort of private project that was done uh, after hours. And it's very loosely related to uh, Bbox. So at Bbox, we have this um, pool table. And like, can your pool table do this? Um, I hope not, uh, because you know you'd be excused to say that it's just slanted into to one side. Um, it's not. It's slanted in, in all different sides, and it's kind of unpredictably slanted that way. Um, so, what do you do? Uh, obviously, you uh, you want to write some code to actually tell you how how uh, uneven the table is and. There's some real life motivation there. Uh, it's an unpredictable system. Um, and we have a pool tournament. So uh, there is pressing need to assess the fairness of, uh, of the tournament. Uh, because you know, if, it's, if for someone it, the, the balls just go into pockets uh, on their own, it's not, it's not fair. Um, so the constraint I had was just um, that there should be no extra setup. Um, which makes it considerably harder. So if you, uh, if you look at sort of professional pool tournaments, they would have a, a camera mounted on top of the table um, and you, you could see everything clearly. Uh, here I was just taking a video uh, of the pool table from the sides and I asked other people to submit their videos as well. So uh, it would just be from a range of different mobile phones, um, you know, uh, like that, and a disclaimer, I'm really bad at pool. So um, some people apparently can spin the cue ball intentionally and are, are good at that. Uh, so yeah, uh, I made the assumption that the balls should just collide and then go into a straight line, which is a very naive assumption. So uh, bear that in mind. So what I did is uh, I, I split this into a few uh, into a few tasks uh, that are sort of uh, more or less easy to do uh, all of them. So um, first of all, I detected where the table was and where uh, the initial positions of the balls were, uh, and then used um, OpenCV to track those, then transformed that into a reference frame, so from a trapezoid into a two by one rectangle, um, then detected the collision, split the sequence into uh, different, different tracks that the balls were going, um, tried to quantify how much uh, skew from a straight line there was, and correlated that with some of the results from our pool tournament, and there's a bonus visualization at the end as well. Uh, so yeah, the first thing. Um, OpenCV is actually pretty great at uh, object tracking from a video, if you know that is where the objects are to begin with. So uh, this is an example of, uh, of one such shot where you know if you have the region of interest, if you know where the balls already are, uh, then the accuracy is pretty good. Uh, it, you know, it has some problems with, uh, say, one one ball including the other. Um, so there's there's some stuff that you might need to work out, but it's it's pretty great. So uh, detecting objects, on the other hand, is a bit more of a challenge. Um, but there is this good heuristic that you have this big blue thing in the middle which is the pool table, um, why not use that? Uh, so what I did was exactly that. So I, uh, the first step was to find where the pool table is, find the corners, and then limit the search space for the blobs to just that, that piece of the image. Um, a little note on color spaces. Um, we're used to red, green, blue um, representation uh, in in images, but uh, what is actually uh, very useful in this case is uh, representing this uh, setting in hue, lightness, saturation space, where things that are blue would be closer together 
to uh, to each other on one dimension, uh, and they would differ on the other two. Um, the advantage of that is that, yeah, uh, when you take a little patch of the table, say take the average of that, then uh, filter filter the parts of the image that are within a certain range of uh, of this value. Uh, it works much better on uh, HLS space than on red, green, blue space. Uh, an extra bonus is that it also applies to images taken from a different camera or images taken at a different time of day uh, when it's you know slightly darker. Uh, I did not like do anything with the color collect correction that was done by the camera itself. Uh, that might be another thing to do uh, if you want to, I don't know, have that as an embedded uh, application or something like that. Uh, so the first step, uh, after you you threshold it on the table area, is to apply edge detection. And again, OpenCV is great with that. It has uh, canny edge detection out of the box. Uh, it works pretty well. Um, then you can apply uh, opening and closing. So opening would be sort of eroding uh, the uh, the little edges first. So if things are small, it would get rid of them, and then it would expand. So it would, um, yeah, it would uh, basically close all the edges. Um, and yeah, closing it does does the opposite thing. It 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 first expands and then erodes. So it makes the shapes sort of fuller. And another heuristic approach here: you just take the biggest contour of these uh, and take that as the table. Um, after that, you just take a uh, convex hull, which is the the biggest sort of polygon that uh, encompasses the whole the whole contour. Uh, and these are all OpenCV functions, so they're uh, you know easy to use. Um, okay, once I did that, uh, I use simple blob detector, and blob is a technical term. I I hear. Uh, to get the initial positions of the of those balls. Um, now, there's another heuristic there. You need to find the cue ball, which is, again, the the white ball. So you can uh, you can use the same approach as for finding the table. It's the one that has a color that's similar to this this particular one. Um, and here's a uh, here's a visualization. I think. I think the polygon might not be actually updating fine, but um, you see um, the four corners uh, of the table. So that is that is something that I took from this. So uh, you have this uh, you have this polygon, and it is actually composed of a few lines on on the top and on the sides. Um, so you can apply something like k-means to cluster the line equations into four clusters. Um, and take the centroids of those four clusters as the equations for the sides of uh, of the well trapezoid. Um, so after that, you can just find intersections uh, of these lines. That's uh, relatively simple algebra, um, and take the intersections that are actually within the picture, because you know the lines would go off and finally intersect somewhere else. Um, and as you saw in the previous video, uh, if you just take the uh, if you just take the raw positions of the corners, they kind of jump around based on what the um, um, what you detect in a certain frame. Uh, you can just smooth them over time to avoid this jitter and make it sort of relatively uniform. Um, okay, so now you have. You have the position of the ball in this trapezoid space. You have the um, the corners of this trapezoid, and you can just use a um, function from OpenCV again to get it, like transform positions from this one space into another. Um, the next step would be to detect the ball collisions, and uh, I use the Raymer Douglas. Poika, I think, algorithm, uh, which finds the sharp turns in a sequence of positions. Um, 
is what uh, OpenCV uses for um, simplifying shapes of objects as well. Um, so basically, it it takes a very sort of noisy position, uh, noisy vector of positions, and uh, finds the points in in which there's a sharp turn. Uh, and I did that because uh, where the balls are actually most susceptible to skewing into one direction is when they're at the last bit, um, when, they're, when they're at the slowest. Um, so now we can go to the, the actual part uh, that was interesting uh, to begin with, which is quantifying how much the table is skewed. And again, uh, the assumption here is that uh, balls are going in straight lines. So you can try to fit a straight line to, say, the first half of the x, y coordinates. Uh, and you just use that using a uh, NumPy or SciPy uh, function to, to, to fit that sort of one degree polynomial, so a straight line. Um, and then you can uh, calculate the mean standard error or some other, um, some other um, measure of variation from, from this straight line. So uh, you actually need to so rotate that so that the straight line uh, goes in the sort of x-axis direction. Uh, and then you can calculate mean standard error. Um, and now correlating it with the pool table, pool table tournament um, results, which was actually the hardest part, because um, I'm not sure if you ever tried to get people to do something voluntarily uh, without any explicit reward. It's hard. Uh, so there was a really low uh, participation rate, but for those videos that uh, mostly I took and uh, from the few that I got from other people, uh, it turns out that there's about 10% higher skew for game winners than uh, game losers. And there's a weak negative correlation between uh, tournament position, so uh, the lower the number, so the higher the position, uh, the higher the skew. Uh, but it was not significant because, well, it was pretty noisy data. Um, does that mean that if the table is more skewed, you're more likely to win? Possibly, uh, but I think skill in this case was still a better predictor. Uh, some people, as I said, uh, just spun the ball um, by, I don't know, magic, I think. Um, so it didn't actually go straight on purpose. Um, and maybe some people actually use what they know about the table to uh, do those shots. So uh, the shot I showed at the beginning, uh, yeah, like some people would do that on purpose. Um, so now there's some bonus visualization. So this is the kind of end-to-end, the end-to-end -end video, so um, you can see the the pole position. I don't have the transformed um, mapping, but um, yeah, that would be that would be sort of another step. Um, and also, this represents the sort of average uh, of uh, of shots. So, what it here is, uh, as I said, in order to calculate the uh, deviation from straight line, you would need to sort of rotate the uh, rotate the uh, shot and um, calculate the deviation uh, like that. Uh, I also normalize the, the length to be sort of standard length, so you can see. Uh, you can compare two shots one by one, uh, like so, and you can see a, a good sort of straight-ish line shot and a, a pretty bad, badly skewed one in red. Um, okay, so in terms of next steps, um, there was a linear assumption there. Um, a better one might be, you know, trying to get some normalized norm data uh, from a level table. Um, that might be one thing to do um, in order to not use this linear assumption. And the blob detection actually could do a bit better. Uh, so there might be, you know, something. Uh, it, like if you don't have occlusion, it works great. But uh, if you do. And it, it's a bit harder, and yeah, not sure if what what's what's the best way to do that. Uh, it'll be good to get more data samples and somehow tag them as well. Uh, so if we had ground truth for some of them, uh, we could do something uh, that's more supervised. 
Okay, thank you very much. Do you have any questions? I have a question. Yeah. Uh, so you showed us the visualization, mm -hmm. and my question is about the speed of your algorithms. Would you be able to run it in real time, or it was just prepared? And um, so us? it runs on my laptop in probably about three times the length of the video. Uh, which means if you had something with a GPU, uh, you could probably do that in real time, yeah. more or less. Uh, OpenCV is pretty, uh, it's pretty good at using GPUs. It's written in C++, so there's a Python binding that I was using. Uh, you might, it might be faster in C++. Mm, thank you very much for your talk. Uh, I want to ask, did you count uh, the distortion of the camera? No, so again, as I said, if you had an embedded system, uh, you could actually get the accelerometer and... Um, I mean, uh, uh, for example, GoPro cameras, get, you, you, could get, you could get very mm, fishy eye image. Okay, uh, yeah, so... Not straight right, lines. Yeah, true. Um, so I did detect the four corners, but I didn't, didn't account for like how bendy the lines were. Um, but it should... Correct for that, I think. Could no? it make? Uh, <laughs> I mean, could it enhance its predictions? Uh, possibly. Uh, yeah. If if the the balls were, if you if you knew that the shapes were necessarily circular, uh, that would probably help mm -hmm. uh, with uh, blob detection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks. Um, thanks for the talk. Um, just a quick question in terms of further stuff that you could do. Did you think of mapping the uh, kind of uh, issues with the table, which spots on the table when you deproject it seem to be deflecting the trajectories of the balls in uh, which direction? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good point. Uh, I could do something like a heat map of where the balls are actually leaning towards. And it would probably be sort of spherical almost uh, surface. Any other questions? Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you.